The 12th Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit WatchtowerDatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of. Only a 12th level intellect has the slightest hope of surviving what you are about to experience. Nah, absolutely no i think you're doing it right now oh. is this the final episode of the show yeah this is the last episode <laughs> the, this, wait this is the end game <laughs> yeah this is of, uh we've been building we've been building 10 years of podcast after oh. after after two years and 40 something episodes of podcast i think it's 42 i think it's 42 which is the answer it is yeah yeah to, We've, uh, to everything to where, the universe. Where, where were we all in 2008? Uh, junior year of high school, senior year. What do you mean? Why 2008? That's when Iron Man came out. Oh yeah. So. 2008 was yeah start of senior year. So we were. In 2009. Uh, yeah, we're little babies. Um, I I was uh, a sophomore, junior. No, you weren't. Well, yeah, I was a were. year younger. No, you weren't. Yeah, it was. Hello, yeah, it was. everybody, and welcome back to the 12th Level <laughs> Intellects Podcast. My name is James Strecker, really and I'm hosted on the Watchtower to the database. <laughs> and no, I, I am your guest, Maddie Washburn. <laughs> Ted Kendrick's I'm here somewhere, Ted too. Kendrick. There he is. <laughs> Wait, no, you're not Ted I Kendrick. I talked over his Ted intro. Is best, Ted is best Watchtower data boy. <laughs> yeah, that was the trick. I, I know, I'm Maddie Washburn. <laughs> so. Maybe I'm Ted Kendrick. I don't know. One of you guys. Maybe I'll be Kendrick. I'm you just want to be Ted Kendrick so you get my graphic content show. It's the easiest one. Yeah. <laughs> I could just you make just two jealous. minute trivia facts. But you you get to be Maddie Washburn and have that squeaky ass chair. So yeah, yeah. it's a win win. Well, scenario. I don't I don't I don't use this in vanishing point. Just in perfectly recording podcasts, balanced which... as all things should be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about Avengers Endgame today. Um, we're also gonna talk about things in that are you know newsworthy first like we always do and uh maddie said he had a handful of things which is good because i have zero i do too okay (laughs) i bet me and maddie have the same things my biggest news is avengers endgame came out oh did it (laughs) i i added to the 1.2 billion dollars it's all i was i was just saying this like before before the show started but like it's already at like the eighth highest worldwide box office of all time ever and it'll yeah. be like seven or six in the next four days when this podcast comes out. <laughs> oh for sure it's yeah. insane. They, after... they've already made back the movie they've been making them sure it's, <laughs> they, it's yeah all of the movies yeah the is the uh, is the is that after like what titanic avatar I don't know what the other ones would be. <laughs> the, um, other six. the the list the list is Avatar, Titanic, uh-huh. Force Awakens, Star Wars. Infinity oh. War, Jurassic World, the first Avengers, Furious Seven, and then Endgame. Furious like that, Seven. That's a uh, weird. I, I like that Avengers. Furious Seven is in the number seven spot right now. Ooh. But that, that's <laughs> Not a, for long. Yeah, we yeah, can't. That's about we, to shake can't up. we can't take it out of that spot. It's, it's going to get furious about it. Yeah. But uh. <laughs> Well, what yeah, else? back what to else? the news. Yeah. On on um, on MCU related news, um, we got news that Scarlett Johansson's going to be the producer on the Black Widow. Black movie. Widow, okay. Ooh, good. Um, I heard she didn't. Ne- well, spoilers. No, spoilers no, 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 not no yet. No spoilers. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just can, saying. Can, I heard that she didn't know the way that, that she didn't know the way that her character was gonna go. Her arc her finishing arc in Endgame, so I think it's a surprise to her going into her solo movie this summer. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah. Interesting. That, you mean that she's just ble- she's uh, dyed her hair green. That's what you're talking Possibly. about. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's she what happened. Black, match, like her name. She wanted yeah. to match Gamora in more ways than one. Mm-hmm. Gamora's hair is green purplish hair. red. Green hair is cool. I, I, I was talking about just the green color palette in general. Sure you were. Um, you were sure. thinking of She-Hulk. But mm. more She's coming, probably. More more MCU stuff. Um Disney Ghost history. Rider. Not, not there yet. Not there it. yet. Oh. I, but, I just predicted it. They're coming to Hulu. Yeah, I mean I'm interjecting. Let, let, let's go let's go ahead and do that. You you cats out of the bag. I said it there. already. I was I was I, I was it. trying to I was trying to to, to build He's into it, yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Yeah. Well um, I just but yeah, so, had a system. 
So Ghost Gabriel Riders, Luna. Ghost Riders the guy from Shield. To... Yes. <laughs> Let Maddie yes. talk. God. You're just, you're just, you're just, you're, you're, you're hitting the bullet points without, without like making a conversation of it. You're just like Skull Ghost face. Rider, Gabriel face Luna, on fire. Hulu, Agents of Shield, chains, they're motorcycles. Connected. Well, so so same apparently, character. Apparently, apparently, the reports are that while Gabriel Luna is reprising the role of Ghost Rider, uh-huh. it's a different version of Ghost Rider. Oh, so I don't, I, I don't, that. I don't know what they're, I don't know what they're doing there. Um, but yeah, that's a thing. Um, staying in the 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 MCU TV division, though, um, past the 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 announced shows. We also got word that Disney has been warned by lawyers not to even think about developing new content featuring any of the Defenders characters <laughs> until Ooh. until it hits the two year mark with the with the Netflix contract. Wow. So, so that's either interesting because I was have plans or they're going to um, pull a uh, what's the Fantastic Four eighties movie Cor Cormac? Oh my God! What's the guy's name? You know what I'm talking about, where they like just made it to retain the rights. Uh, yeah, to yeah, for. yeah. Mark Mark knows the name of the dude, and he's angry that I don't remember, but it's okay. Same with the most recent one See, with Josh Trank. I was like, sure. I, I was, I was theorizing that like maybe the way the contract was set up, like Disney could start development at the very least, and and, and you know release stuff at the two year mark. But mm-hmm. the fact that uh. The fact that they're saying that lawyers are telling them not to even start <laughs> developing lawyers until the hate him month. for this one simple <laughs> trick. <laughs> but I, I, I'm 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 very concerned about the future of those characters now. Uh, it's gonna be okay. It's yeah. just gonna take a year or two, but you know, well, they just, I mean, they, just be a year or two. Just, Either, yeah. Do 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 you really think that like Charlie Cox or or? I'm back. blanking on everyone else's name. Are going are going <laughs> to be Ritter. free in two years? You know, they could be. I don't know. Like, there's no reason. The that the they only the only way it. the only way that I could see it panning out is if Disney's like paying them a shit ton of money right now to keep their availability open. Well, it wouldn't be like okay, it's two years from now. We're making these shows right now. It's going to yeah. be, okay, well, now we're going to schedule the shows and figure it out. And it's probably going to be really like four years before we see another Daredevil thing. Yeah, they're, right. they have time to Right, but what... But yeah. I just like... They'll schedule it. Have faith, they'll, man. They'll, they'll, schedule, it faith. they'll schedule it, but it's just like... To me, these are TV actors, and once you sure. are like focusing on like one tv project you don't really have much wiggle room to do two tv shows at a time yeah i I mean maybe they'll recast the characters but i i feel like i feel like that would be easy enough to do without ruining any like continuity because the tv the netflix stuff has never Mm -hmm. really been that super connected to the movies like they reference stuff that happens but not directly enough that like they don't have thor show up or yeah i mean they the netflix shows feel kind of like the adventures comics to me to where like the stuff that happens in the movies happens in the the tv shows but But the tv shows don't necessarily but like i just i i personally don't like i don't like the idea of them decanonizing things as they're going but i don't know well now they have you know, I keep bringing it back to in game, but they've established yeah, 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 a multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm heated about anything that. Anything can go. Um, <laughs> did 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 you guys have any news? I have a, a couple more. No, things, I but... have absolutely nothing. Other there was than the um, news that I am drinking a uh, raspberry Belgian raspberry cider. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I heard that the <laughs> Spider Verse creators were signed to uh, Sony TV Animation to do a um, Spider Verse TV show. Like yeah, a spinoff from the movie. Yeah, I, cool. I, I, I didn't know it was a Spider Verse TV show. What I saw was they That's got a part of it. Yeah, they got a live action stuff too. They got a nine figure budget to to launch a Sony oh. Marvel TV universe. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's gonna either be really cool or a big waste of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if be, it's the Spider Verse guys, it's, it might be good, but like, and I think it'll be Spider Verse guys in the Spider Verse world. Okay. Because Sony doing trying to do any connected universe, it always just kind of flops. I don't know. Yeah, 
Maybe I we'll finally get always, the Sinister Six. Yeah, I guess by mm-hmm. always I do mean the one time they've done it. But I guess Venom is supposed to be the start of a handful of movies too. So honestly, yeah, honestly, the 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 they can't all be bad. They should they should yes, just they, they should just rename the the Sony's Marvel Universe without Spider Man. They should just rename that the Dark Universe. Venom, Venom, <laughs> Venom. But uh, like Venom, Venom, Venom. I got yeah. I got another thing. Hey, you uh, gotta po- know what Pokemon Venom. Man. He's yeah, going to be oh, in yeah. James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Yes. What, say his name again because I was singing the, the Polka Dot Man. Yeah. He's Polka a very Dot obscure yeah. DC villain. Yeah. They cast they cast David David da- Dastmal Dastmal Dast Dastard David Dastard yeah, Dastardly <laughs> Wabbit. Yeah, Dave Dastardly. The, the, uh, I think they the, really the, cast. The, I didn't write that down. I just know that he was going to be in the movie. Yeah, he's a uh, what the the Ant-Man um guy the is oh, he, Dave, Rush, is he yeah, Russian in that, that movie or right or, wait, you're talking right. about the bad guy the the no 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 guy? the 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 he, the the the, the, the like russian guy that works for the security business that they put together uh he was also in the dark in the Knight. He, was the, he was one of the police who was like nervous there with a joker impersonated cop hmm. he was okay. in the dark Knight too oh well, i know who you're talking about now yeah okay yeah, I can see his face. Um, he's the he's, Polka Dot He's been man. in stuff. Yeah, do we do we think this will be a uh, Slipknot situation where Polka Dot Man is just the first to have his head explode? <laughs> or the will I hope, I hope not. I don't, utilize him? I don't think James Gunn is going to do that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But or he, I mean, I I have faith he's in gonna him. He's going to be the, the, the Groot script. of the team. Sure. He'll be the Groot. <laughs> I am Polka Dot Man is all he can say, <laughs> uh, but the, he, uh, I mean, James Gunn could go. Uh, he has better like comedic. I have more comedic faith in him uh, than I do a I don't know, Joss Whedon Justice League kind of thing. But I'm just right. thinking like, like in in Justice League they have that whole like do you bleed joke as like a mm-hmm. reference to batman vs superman that is supposed to be funny but just comes off cringy so that the same could happen with like hey remember that bad suicide squad movie they said this in that movie or they did this they, they blew up slipknot's head let's blow up polka dot man's head and make a reference to that people will find that funny <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't want them to <laughs> i don't know i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, um, probably not. They there's always some casualty though in the Suicide Squad. Like when they first start out, where yeah. Waller makes a power play, which is like, I could blow up your heads at any moment. See, I just did it to that guy. Yeah. So. Just Slipknot. You know, just cast the exact same guy as Slipknot and do the exact same thing. Yeah. And JLU, although she kind of did to herself. There was someone that recently commented on a video and asked if we thought that they put Plastique and Task Force X in Justice League Unlimited because. They, it was Bat and Bargo, and they couldn't get Harley Quinn. But I don't think Harley Quinn was in the Suicide Squad for a, quite a while after that. Plastique was in the Suicide Squad for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and in the comics, she and Captain Adam ended up having a thing. Hmm. Well, but there you go. I've got a little bit more news. Uh-huh. Um, we got the Child's Play movie poster. And um, trailer. Yes. Oh, yeah, so the trailer. Yeah, and the trailer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The 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 poster the poster is pretty funny. It's a it, it, it parodies the Toy Story four poster. Yeah. It's got it's got Woody's arm like out there in the the middle of things with like a little bit of cotton stuffing out and everything. Um, <laughs> but on top of that, we just got news that despite the fact they're making a Child's Play reboot. We are expecting a Child's Play TV series in yeah. 2020 to follow the the, the 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 original Child's Play timeline, kind of like Ash vs. Evil Dead did. Right. I, I was reading about that because the, I think it's something about how the guy who made like the original creator director Don or Mancini. Of, yeah, he still retains the rights to the character or something. He retains some sort of rights that allow him to do whatever he wants to and make whatever movies and shows and whatever. But the, but the, or maybe it's only shows and the cinema rights are somewhere else. I can't remember, but it was something where like he can still do something separate with the character and while they, while the movie studio continues to Which, make money off of it at the same time. But, thank God that he can though. Like, yeah. <laughs> more, more creators should, should have the rights to the things they yeah. create. Um, yeah. Agreed. 
but I, I'm I'm excited for that. Uh, you guys know about my uh, shared horror movie universe theory, so that's just gonna sure. give more. Uh, that's gonna give that's gonna give more branching timelines. Yeah, um, <laughs> Chucky branching timelines. Yeah. And then the final the final piece of news I got is we got the fucking Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. Oh my god! Oh my god! I, <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I. I when <laughs> when the design first dropped, I uh, thought it looked tolerable, but yeah. now seeing it in motion, it is just fucking horrifying. And like someone I, sent me a picture of the when the kid in Jumanji turns into a monkey. Yeah, I, I, I saw that tweet. <laughs> and then colored that in tweet. blue, and it but, just looks exactly the same. Oh my god! But like, I'm just, I'm just. The trailer doesn't 100 percent turn me off from the movie. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it looks fun, but it just looks disgusting at the same time. And it does. And like, I don't expect some it to disgusting be... Sonic the Hedgehog memes out there, and I feel like they were inspired by those <laughs> and not the video games. I just, my, I'll have my, to send you some. My theory, <laughs> my theory is that they wrote the script, and at some point in the script they had a character like grab Sonic by the throat and choke him. And then they went and when they went to design him, they realized Sonic doesn't typically have a neck (laughs) and decided the designers are going to have to figure this out because I'm not rewriting the script at all. So he has a neck when he doesn't usually, I wasn't paying attention to that. Yes. Yeah. He, he he usually doesn't have, he usually doesn't have like an actual neck. It's just his head kind of sits on okay. his shoulders. So, so that's part. So, so that's like subconsciously what's making it, or part of what's making it look like disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, it, the design very much just looks like a dude in a Sonic suit. You know, yeah. like, like it, 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 look, it, it looks. It does. It, it kind of looks like they 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 put a dude in a Sonic suit. And did like some camera manipulation, like what they did with uh, Peter Dinklage, to make him look taller, just to make this sure. guy in a sonic suit look smaller. And it's it's <laughs> very, it's just very uncomfortable. Yeah, it, it's I don't know. I I wouldn't have a problem with the design as much if the movie also looked better potentially. Like I think my I think I like the idea of Jim Carrey as Doctor Robotnik, like especially in that last shot of the trailer where he's bald and he has the giant mustache and everything which i feel like they showed as a thing that you're supposed to like sit in a theater audience and like scream cheer at like oh my god no way he looks just like the thing and the uh, but it was just like that was the only part that was sort of like good about the trailer everything else is like jason marsden is just phoning it in uh is that his name jane yeah i get the confused because yeah. there's also a james marsden is that james marsden i don't remember but <laughs> Cyclops is phoning it in, and the, and everybody on this, everybody in every shot just seems. Like, it's also the guy that plays uh, Damian Dark and Arrow. He's like the like. Oh yeah, I noticed him there. He's mm-hmm. the military general or whatever. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I like I like how the the like the police car said like Green Hill Police on it, which like Green Hill Zone is like Sonic level one. Yeah, point. yeah. And and oh, cool. and. and they say it's it. The movie's set in the Pacific Northwest, so I'm just sitting here like, is Green Hill Zone like right down the street from me? <laughs> Twenty two yeah, bridges. Twenty two bridges. <laughs> Twenty one bridges. Oh, is that nice. the line? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Jessica I, Jessica I, Cruz and Sonic the Hedgehog live, live right next door town, to each yeah. other. Canon. <laughs> the what a team up. <laughs> Building a Seattle's got their own little Justice League. <laughs> Limelight and Sonic. Not could Seattle, you, the could Pacific you, Northwest. Could you could you imagine how much faster it would be to get that thing from exploding the sun? <laughs> yeah, Sonic she just makes true. a treadmill and Sonic runs yeah. on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, just uh, like that episode of Justice League when we uh, when the exactly. emoji movie came out, and I did the uh, the review video with my friends where we dressed up as emojis and got really really drunk and went to go see the movie. Um, we're talking about doing the same thing for the Sonic movie where we dress up as Sonic characters and get really, really drunk and go to the movie and film it. And uh, Will, Do my it. friend who is in one of the emoji costumes, he really wants to be Sonic. I think I'm going to end up as Dr. Robotnik. And we had we had too many friends doing it. So we're like, okay, you can be Tails. You can be Knuckles. Uh, you can be a ring. You'll, you're a ring. You know, like we were running out of characters. That's great. But, 
It's. I mean, you always got to take an excuse to wear your furry suit when you can. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I. I don't own one already. Uh huh. Um, okay, James. Sure. We'll buy one. <laughs> I do have yeah. a Cheshire Cat costume. Uh, hey, that's anyway. really close. So <laughs> you should anyway, wear that. That's that's all. That's all I had for news. So yeah. now I've got one more. I've got one more. Let's stuff. get into the furries. More. I got one more. Yeah, this is close. This is kind of related. Um, there's a trailer for the Pennyworth show, mm-hmm. like Alfred Pennyworth. He's getting his own show called yeah. Pennyworth. Yes. It's going to be on the Epics channel, yeah. I think. And mm-hmm. it looks like Downton Abbey. Um, yeah, that's and all it, I have to say the, the trailer. The trailer ends with like it's it's on or on TV and the app, and that made me think like, oh, it's going to be on DC Universe, I guess. But I think it's the Epics app. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not, not. I'm not gonna watch this. Probably, <laughs> like if it's on DC Universe, I might give it a shot. But. I don't understand now that they've got DC Universe. Like, why are they bothering? Like, still putting everything in different places. You know? Yeah. Like, what? There's why still, is it? There's well, still some it sort of universe show. Yeah, I'm sure that there's still like a good chunk of the demographic that just watches gotham on tv or just watches mm-hmm, arrow on tv is. or whatever so sure but um, like if you can incentivize them to get yeah, the yeah. app like I, I feel i feel like it's an easier way to kind of funnel money to the company like it's probably it's probably just like i mean i'm not i agree with you i think on a legal side it's probably something to do like just how the netflix marvel shows were on netflix and there was sure. also agents of it's shield also, on tv and whatever yeah also probably getting the epics money from the channel yeah, yeah. to make the show well so, so the end of the trailer is uh which i didn't expect is thomas wayne saying like mm-hmm. oh what's your name and he says alfred pennyworth oh i'm thomas wayne i've got a job for you and it just makes me think like okay episode one of pennyworth he be- he becomes the butler of the wayne family <laughs> like that's what he, he diapers bruce's by. bottom yeah he died but you bottom right. Immediately, yeah. <laughs> it's just like that's it's the show's actually a, a joke. It's just one. It's a pilot. The, it's gonna take. It's gonna episode. take place like concurrently with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie. Right. <laughs> nice. Well, I gotta grab my power cord real quick. I don't no. think it's gonna interfere. But yeah, one second. Okay. You're interfering. With now my... for the most important part of news. Yes. Ted is gone. Doomsday Clock has been pushed back. Oh God! <laughs> Ted wants to talk about how Doomsday Clock was pushed back two weeks, three weeks, four months, eight months, twelve years, right? What? There's three issues of Doomsday Clock left, and the, the That's right. number ten is now scheduled to come out in like November Lightning. or something. <laughs> oh, it's only it's, that. It's only that soon. Okay. Yeah, but I thought like, by now it was like realistically Christmas. like mid June by this point, right? Like, yeah. come on, we're gonna get at least one more delay. Uh, I mean, it seems like every day you send you send it's, it's another article. It's the same article. article. It's the same. Yeah, no, it's, it's the same updates. article. It just yeah. keeps getting updated. Well, yeah. number ten <laughs> from has News been Rama. pushed back another two weeks. Yeah, but they keep so it's it's adding. It's not like each yeah. article is not like they pushed it back six weeks. Oh, this time they decided to push it back seven weeks. This oh, time okay. they're pushing it back eight. It, it keeps adding another week. Okay, I thought pushing it. Yeah, it I thought it was pushed back two weeks. Nope. Now push back three more weeks. Now push back eight more weeks. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. There was but, a minute there where uh, Doomsday Clock number eleven was technically scheduled come to come out, out first, before yeah. number ten, <laughs> and it was like, well, obviously <laughs> they're gonna push that back. They just haven't officially announced it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would that was their plan all along. It's the doomsday clock countdown. It, it's not what you expect. The clock um, crew. There is a Watchmen, there's some Watchmen like teaser kind of stuff. It's not like full. I don't think we've gotten maybe there's been one trailer, like a normal trailer, but there's just been a bunch of HBO ads that just mm-hmm. have clips from all their different shows coming up. And there's been a handful of shots of um uh, what's his face? Shack. Yeah, well, yeah, Ooh, we just so there's just a new one with Rorschach, one. yeah, um, and there's you can also watch been it if you a watch bunch Game of, of Thrones, right? Yeah, there's been one. With I don't bunch, watch Game of Thrones, and no, neither oh, does most of the YouTube episode. audience of our Yeah, channel. we're not gonna talk about that again on, uh, on our. Podcast. Well, we might when the season's over, but that's the maximum, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, but there, people who, don't care. Who's the guy that you, plays? You, you, you shot people out of the Discord because of yeah. the Game of Thrones. Why? Why was I tagged? Oh, oh no. Wait, okay, what's the, who's the guy who plays um, Alfred in Batman vs Superman? He's he's Scar's voice in Lion King. He's in uh, 
You know who I'm James talking Earl about. Jones. Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, James Earl um, Jones. <laughs> no, it's... Um, <coughs> is, it, is it... No, it's not Gary Oldman. No. I want to say Jacob Isaacs, but that's someone no. else, too. Oh, my God. I'm so upset at myself. No, hold on. We got this. We got this. It's uh, He was in Die Hard 3. Yes, he was. <laughs> I don't know. All, all I do know is we're 30 Jeremy Irons. In. Yeah, that's no, that's I just right. had I just had to say he's hey, in I the Hey, I said Watchmen. Jacob Isaacs. I had the right initials. Yeah, you're right. He uh, he's in the Watchmen trailer, but we don't really know what character oh. he is. Is he an Ozzy Mendez type? Is he just a businessman? He's in kind of a weird costume. I think they're all very... new. Yeah, that's true. New characters. So anyway, that's all. Okay, uh, so I don't think we can probably keep from spoiling anything by talking about Endgame. Nope. So there's just going to be spoilers for the whole movie, the whole discussion. Um, I'm, I'll say right out the gate, I really liked the last hour of Endgame, and I definitely enjoyed the first two. I didn't dislike them, but it was a completely different movie. Did you, <laughs> did you watch the last hour of Endgame? I did watch the last hour of Endgame. I'm just saying about between all the tears in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, that was <laughs> right? only the last, like, 20 minutes. So. <laughs> I cried a lot too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I've been I've been trying um, because like a lot of the times when I when I go into these po- uh, review podcasts with you guys is like I'll watch the movie and then like we'll have a podcast like you know a couple days after I watch the movie yeah and that's then what like I did. and then like I'll, I'll you know in the meantime be listening to other people's reviews and stuff right right and like Same. Yeah. this time this time i tried not to do that so much because yeah, like be i wanted to get other opinions yeah. yeah i wanted to get my thoughts without like having to worry sure. about other people's thoughts which like i still like listen to tim talks review yeah yeah I, I watched the red letter media review and stuff, i got the h3 h3 yeah. review well like, get it get your get your thoughts out and we'll discuss them with you because I, then we can i read kinda... a new york times article that was an interview with the screenwriters about like they talked about various parts of the movie so i kind of yeah. have that info in my head Maddie, I would say <laughs> so, keep keep your thoughts about the timeline stuff till the end, maybe, and we'll talk yeah. about other other aspects first, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel I feel like right out the gate, um, I fucking loved this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, I it's did so too. it's it it's so, so good. Um, <laughs> the beer. To me, the only downside of it pour, pour is, one out for our lost boys. <laughs> but lost to boys. me, to me, the the only downside of it was the pacing was yeah. bad in the first two hours. Like, I, I, I feel like they needed to spend more time on, like, Captain Marvel going to get Tony. Like, sure. that just kind of happens deuce ex machina all of a sudden. And Yeah, then, I like, mean, it took me it took me maybe, like, an hour of thinking about it after the movie. I was like, wait, so did the end, did the post-credits of Captain Marvel just not happen? Was that just a fake-out? And then I realized that, no, Captain America has a beard during that. So I guess she came... Hey, where's Fury? The pager went, is going off. Yeah. And then they're yeah, like, oh, everyone's dead. By the way, Tony Stark's in space somewhere. You should go get him. And then he went, she went and got him, I guess. Yeah. But so like, It's I, very not clear <laughs> that that's what I happened. I feel like they should have spent more time on that. And then like yeah. maybe just kind of consolidated a little bit more of the, the time travel stuff a little bit. Um, but like, as I far, think it as was as... good. It was helpful for their the impact of Thanos being beheaded so early in the movie mm-hmm. that i think if they dwelled any i did feel that way as it was happening they're like oh tony stark was saved like immediately but i think if they dwelled on that any more than they did then the the shock value of thanos just right. oh what the hell he's dead in the first 15 minutes like what is happening it wouldn't have been as, i i like that yeah. they saved tony so fast because that was something that was like okay they had him lost in a drift in space at the end of the last movie yeah um you know, raise the stakes really high, but coming back for this one, it was nice to kind of be like, okay, now that's. And I guess you know really he's going to get saved, so it might. As yeah, well and we could bring it, him yeah. in with the rest of the team, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. but then having that whole five year jump that they do shortly after they do kill Thanos really kind of reset all the characters. Yeah, as, as I think I kind of I base level. with Tony Stark, I did like that they did sort of a similar CGI effect as uh, skinny Captain America, where they like made him really sickly and skinny, like he was not doing so hot i don't know if you noticed that but like when he's sitting in the chair and he's got the iv in him and stuff like he's really under muscular mm-hmm. you know? so yeah. he's just he's very like i'm i'm going about to die any second kind of a thing yeah 
Yeah. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I just... yeah the, in terms of, you mentioned pacing. I think that uh, it was more of going into Infinity War, I was like, how can they possibly handle you know, all of these dozens of characters in one movie and give them enough screen time each and give them important things to do and all this stuff. And I came away from the movie thinking like, wow, I'm really impressed with how they actually did do that. Like they, everybody mm-hmm. that no one felt left out, everything felt really well handled and like, uh, wow, like great job Russo brothers. And even though this end game was supposedly, you know, written and filmed at the same time and all this stuff like that, like as well as like a Lord of the Rings, you back to back filming kind of right. thing it felt almost more like even though i did think endgame was still really good it felt more like the russo brothers had a very like well thought out good idea for a movie and they and they made a movie and then ted and james wrote their fan fiction for the second half of the movie <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like the, there's the dcau and then there's legacies of the dcau and endgame felt sort of like the legacies of the dcau ending to infinity war meaning it's still <laughs> good but it's not necessarily like what could have been it's, i it, guess i don't maybe know Maybe also because it just like we do with legacies they just kind of look back on what's come before mm-hmm. which is you know exactly what a legacy is yeah it was a lot of continuity porn which is how we've described yes. legacies before <laughs> <So>. yes <laughs> right yeah, yeah. yeah. but it was yeah. still it wasn't bad stuff i just felt like that there were not as many characters this time because half of them are dead and yet it felt like they weren't handled as well as the infinity war i guess it didn't feel as well, well structured maybe a, but. a big thing about this movie is they wanted to focus on the original avengers yes. from the first movie and so and they were all here's the main characters yeah along with ant-man and um a couple others but because i had mixed feeling i know maddie probably has a shit ton to say and i'm sorry i keep interrupting you, oh, you're good. i i i had mixed feelings about the fact that this movie was very much like a I know people keep describing Fatal Five as like a love letter to JLU, and this kind of felt like a love letter to the MCU. Um, and but but when like I, it's the conclusion. not not years after the fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Sure, but it, it mm-hmm. like it's obviously it's it's the conclusion. It's what everything's been building to, and like more or less, this is what they've had in mind for a very long time. But mm-hmm. the at least the the big beats of it anyway. But the but at the same time, it's like. If they were going to, I'm I'm getting my complaints out of the way first, so that we can talk about all the good stuff, I guess. But if 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 it was building to this like grand finale, I feel like Infinity War is more of the grand finale, and this is like the climax, and this movie is like the resolution, I guess. Is so it's yeah. like it's more of a like it's a tribute while obviously still being you know in the same continuity in the same world and the same every like it's it's the ending but it's also like remember the last 10 like there's even a very blatant tony stark's hologram speech at the funeral is like he's basically speaking to the audience about like who knew that 10 years ago we would have da 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 like he's just saying Mm -hmm. what you're thinking about what's happening right now which is really cool that's really cool and i don't dislike it it just felt kind of weird to me that that's how they chose to end it i guess but maybe no better way to end it I don't know. That's my thoughts <laughs> on the bulk of the movie. Interesting. Yeah, um, I do agree. I think Infinity War was maybe like a better made movie overall in terms of just yeah. like the pacing, the build up, um, the the characters and the stakes and everything. But I do love a good time travel movie, so sure. I was <laughs> I was here for this as soon as they started going there, which I kind of expect. It wasn't a surprise for me. Um, I kind of had that thought going in. Okay, Ant Man's. We're going to do the quantum realm yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. I had heard rumors of like Ant-Man being around in like the 2012 New York set that they did sure. from the original Avengers movie. Um, but that, I don't know. All that stuff is just so much fun. Yeah. To see that. And it's, yeah, it's I, not like it's. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 oh, feel, well, I, I feel like. Infi- oh, I feel like <laughs> Infinity War is like is definitely the better movie as far as like drama and stakes and everything goes. Yeah. But in the future, I see myself revisiting this movie more because it's sure. much more of a fun time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. And, and, like, 
you have to be in a, a specific mood to be like, I want to watch a movie that will, <laughs> where everyone will, gets ripped will apart, <laughs> rip yeah. my fucking heart yeah. out without yeah. a happy conclusion. Yeah. Well, you I know, mean, really, whereas, my heart was ripped out more at the end of this movie. Than oh no, was, my, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel like I cried like four or five times in in yeah. the uh, in the, this movie. Yeah, but some like, beautiful moments. But it it, it 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 has a happier resolution, sure, and sure, it sure. has it has much more lightheartedness in between all of those moments. So yeah. it, it's overall, it's a funner movie despite being the weaker of the two. You know. Yeah, I think. That makes um, sense. I think mm. Infinity War has so much like going for it. You know, like even though I think we knew at the time that it was going to be two a two part movie, um, yeah, I didn't. They even that. announced it originally part one, and part yeah, two. Yeah, they yeah. were like, "Oh no, they're different movies." But and, I don't think they were really. They, are. they weren't. They weren't really like leaning on that going into the Infinity War release. They were kind of leaning on like Infinity War is what we've been building to for ten years. Oh my god, which I guess might have been on purpose so that by the time that the movie ends, you're like, "Wait, the, what?" But they lost. Oh my god, and everything. Um, mm. But like you know, I was going into Infinity War forgetting that there was going to be a part two, and so it was. I felt almost. I'm glad that it only you know it was a year later only, and not like four years from now or something like that. Or five just, years you, later, made us wait yeah. real time. Five right? Years. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been quite the like. I mean, I think they knew what they were doing. I guess, but there was a lot of just like weird. Um, silliness in this movie that might that felt like it kind of didn't fit with the Infinity War tone, but I felt like maybe that was like necessary. America's ass. Well, not necessarily that, but just like Fat <laughs> Thor or um, oh yeah, yeah, or Absolutely. all the all the all the turning Ant Man into a yeah turning Ant Man yeah. into a baby and then an old man and stuff like that. Like that, but at this, that was pretty funny though. Like yeah, but and I think but I think on retrospect it was kind of necessary after such a depressing in ending mm. to infinity war <laughs> like you kind of need some uplifting stuff here and there even if it's kind of yeah. weird but yeah sure so i think do we do we have our complaints out of the way probably how, how <laughs> I'll, we, i'm sure yeah. i'll have something else but <laughs> how do we how do we want to to structure the rest of the conversation i don't know <laughs> i think we <laughs> should just keep talking be. about what comes to mind yeah yeah just make it through the points so, let's keep it going yeah i mean i mean like so 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 I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna try to approach things chronologically, I guess. Okay. But I feel I, I feel like you know take it wherever the uh, the yeah the conversation leads us. But um, Jesus, the way that they opened up the movie, like oh yeah. I, I I knew I knew we were gonna see Hawkeye like watch his family disintegrate. I didn't right think we were actually yeah. gonna see it. I thought we were just gonna come up like we were gonna come to him later in the movie and and he'll be like this is why i'm doing what i'm doing because my family's gone but that was that was the best unexpected opening i think because as soon as i, just, I saw his family i was just oh no we're I, I, like, 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 I, I i felt i felt like they were gonna do that just simply because like they went balls to the wall with like ripping our hearts out at the end of infinity war sure. so why wouldn't they do it again to, i think know, it's even worse that we couldn't see them it's... actually disappear they just disappeared off screen like that made yeah, it even more like oh no oh no <laughs> I, like I, I i feel like this this movie did a really good job of making you care more about hawkeye and black widow Sure. Um, but they like, tried like, to I mean, really hard in Age of Ultron, and I didn't care. But I did care in this movie. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, like I, I, you know, like I've been with it since the start. I feel like yeah. we all have. So, so I feel like I had an emotional character, like like uh, 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 an emotional connection to these characters. Mm -hmm. But this movie deepened it so much more. Uh, I know I just said we were gonna go chronological, but like yeah, whatever. No, I, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, I'm <laughs> they Iron Man they died. In the movie. <laughs> when we got when we got to them going to Voromir, like as yeah. soon as soon as they said that's what was the, what they were doing, I like I grabbed Sissy by the shoulder and I was like, oh my god, one of them's gonna throw the other one off the fucking cliff. They're gonna have yes. to, and. I think and 
like just just watching the like I, I I don't know I feel like there have been yeah. a couple people <coughs> complain about that scene but I feel like watching it happen like and and them both trying so hard to stop the other sure. one from going over the edge was just that, that fucking ripped my heart out that that's so I, I have two thoughts on that scene one is that. Did they not know going into it that they were gonna? Ha- I mean, okay. they personally maybe not, but I, someone there should have known, shouldn't they I don't, have? Like, was anyone that's part of the team were they? Well, Gabora like, threw herself off. Um, I, I, I feel I feel like the only one didn't throw who off, would have pushed. maybe known would have been Nebula. Nebula. Yeah, yeah. I feel but, like she should have known from. I mean, I, I guess it's possible she didn't, but and maybe that. What well, wasn't definite? I don't know. But. She was she was with them on Titan, so I feel like she had to have seen Peter go crazy against yeah. Thanos. So so I feel like she yeah. had to have known. But well, I, isn't there a moment where she in Infinity War? Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Where, where uh, Nebula realizes that that's that's why she's there to kill Thanos. Like she comes crash landing on Titan because she's like, you killed Gamora in order to get the soul stone, you asshole kind of a thing. Um, or is that, am I remembering that wrong? I can't remember. No, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. I think so, she knew. So I feel and like I'm she should sure. have been able to tell them like, that's what you're going to have to do. So like maybe take something, someone else with you <laughs> that you can push off the cliff. <laughs> I, I feel like they knew. I, I, I feel like, I feel like if she told them what Black was going to happen, know. I feel they like they wouldn't have done it. Yeah. 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 So I, I feel I feel like that's a thing that like she had to keep to herself. Yeah. I thought um, I thought that Black Widow <coughs> had a little talk about it with um I mean like obviously they she and Hawkeye talked about when they were up there but yeah yeah like when they first saw um uh the Red Skull out there I think yeah, she I just, knew well that was my second thought on the scene I guess is that their whole little conversation and then you know, kind of trying to trip each other over and stuff like that to be the one to sacrifice themselves. That was more emotionally, like, heartstring pulling to me than the actual moment of Black Widow sacrificing herself because it felt like a death that was not going to actually be permanent. Like, it felt like a Mm kind of... And that whole scene, for some reason, felt like it was almost like a Simpsons parody of the Infinity War scene with Red Skull. Like, it was like remember like i don't know just felt like something you'd see on like a snl sketch or something like that instead of an actual because it's it's basically overriding the one that thanos did with this new one that happened earlier or whatever um but it's all the same all the same beats almost identical camera angle of her lying on the ground with her Mm -hmm. head split open and everything where it was like okay like but i just saw this so it wasn't as emotional as i thought it could have been like film it a different way or you know just but but then hawkeye sitting up in the water was oh fuck yeah just like thanos yeah yeah that was that was worse than the thanos sitting up in the water moment so i don't know it it had its back and forth for me i guess i think it was important to keep those um you know similar shots and callbacks yeah i think like like, last time i can i can understand uh maybe like the the parallels kind of taking you out of it a little bit but mm-hmm. I feel like going back and watching, you know, everything as a series. Sure. Uh, like, there's so many parallels in this to to prior movies, and like, I don't I don't think that just because Infinity War was a year ago, like the parallel shouldn't be there to that. You know. I guess like, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you, I mean, we're watching them in real time versus someone that might rewatch the whole thing as a a binge watch or you know several years right. apart from each other or whatever so yeah. now the thing about vormir that i have questions about though is when cap goes back and returns the stone yeah what do you what do you, what do you think his reaction is to showing up and being like well, oh yeah i really want to see red skull let yeah. me give you let me <laughs> Whoa, give you this. yeah <laughs> yeah old buddy old <laughs> but pal can you I can you like... can you can you unkill Black Widow so this goes back wherever it needed to be? Yeah, well, it's like... I he bet can't... he punches Red Skull right <laughs> off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. He, he returns the this, this stone. Well, that's the thing. Can he return... Can he, like, 
reverse the the process because I, isn't that the process that literally creates the stone it's not like the stone's sitting in the sky waiting and then killing someone allows the stone to appear in your hand it's like there is no stone there's just the essence of the stone until you kill someone am i wrong about that because i, I feel like <laughs> i don't understand how it works okay. so i'm not i'm how not does too this entirely cosmic sure. made up sci-fi thing work man but like because because my my thing is my thing is gotta be stoned for it. <laughs> yeah, in probably. Infinity yeah. War, in Infinity War, oh, I see what in you've Infinity done. War, Ted, Red I'm Skull so, talks sorry. about like how he wanted the Soul Stone but couldn't get it, and now right. that like Steve has to return it, like it just Did seems you, like yeah. Red Skull could be like, oh sweet, this is the thing that I've wanted. It's kind of weird how that stone in particular is so different from all the rest of them. Like the, all the rest of them, I mean, maybe they all kind of came into existence in a similar fashion and the soul stone's the only one that is just not forged yet or something like that. Like you have to do this act in order to make it a physical stone versus every other stone has already gone through a, some sort of process that made, because they're already in in a blue box or in a mm. circle or in a, you know whatever right this one's just like an idea until you think hard enough about it and it appears which is also my problem upon like i this was something that i picked up from the red letter media review it's not an original thought but i did think yeah, like i i like their commentary on how there are no actually sorry it's not from the red letter media review it's from the uh pitch meeting who, who that guy that does the pitch meeting videos on youtube yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he uh he had a, a good thought about a good comment about how like uh the the infinity gauntlet and snapping your fingers is like a birthday wish where it's just like right you, you think hard enough about it and then you you do the thing you do an act and then that thing happens and but you can't tell anyone about it you can't tell dr strange dr strange can't tell you what it is or else it won't come true or whatever mm -hmm. like, so it's like a birthday wish no it's not the same like with collecting wish. all the dragon balls summoning <laughs> yeah. the dragon but, <laughs> but yeah anyway. it's not really a problem because there everything is made up so it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah it's Every, just it's just interesting. Captain America is not real, Ted. Sorry. What? what? <laughs> I'm maybe next thing is. you'll tell me the Easter Bunny is not real. <laughs> well, Captain Santa America mean... is the Easter Bunny. <laughs> They're joining the Avengers next movie. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I'm trying to think. <laughs> like we 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 mentioned Hawkeye and and Black Widow. Yes. We we, mm -hmm. we mentioned. Let's talk time travel. Yeah, I don't, well I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're, I don't think we're there yet. No, I think there's, we're there. There's still, there's so, there's so much that happens in this movie. I don't know <laughs> if we're there yet. I did like um, Tony's, Tony's interaction with his daughter. Were really all really cute. All the, I love yeah. you. Yeah. The way, the way, the, the way they set up the stakes at the start of this movie was fantastic. Like, I know you said that the first hour was weak, but the first hour like gave us emotional like attachment for Hawkeye. It, I it, guess, it it killed I guess it I killed like, off Thanos uh, and yeah, like mm -hmm. made you be like wait what the fuck is this movie gonna be about what's gonna yeah, happen yeah, yeah. like yeah it, it, but then it, it ends it, up just being about uh, not about Thanos but he's still the bad guy I guess yeah that was and my then, only disappointment because it's that. all true universe from the past <laughs> Thanos yeah. and then and then also in the first hour they give us they give us Tony's daughter which like is to yeah. be like sure we can do time travel but like. There's stakes here too. Like yes. we can't like like there, these people have moved on and like made meaningful yeah. connections and everything, and, and, and we can't undo it. You know. So it it it, it, it did a really good job uh, of kind of just made like like just throwing you for a loop so early yeah. on. You know, for a Mobius strip, Mobius strip, <coughs> there, buddy. But I guess I guess I guess we can start talking about the the time travel stuff. Uh, Ted, Ted's Ted's got a smile, so let's. Ted, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it was yeah, cool. Ted, they went back to all the best movies. Not all the best movies. They went back to Thor: The Lost, the the Dark World. Yeah, yeah. So definitely not all the best movies. But they <laughs> went back to a bunch of the events of um of the first Guardians, the first Avengers, and Thor: The Dark Dark World. And yeah. the 1970s. Right. And the 1970s. That's right. Well, Which, was that the same time as a previous movie, or was that just no, like... No, it's early. Tony no, being so, like so, a, that's, so, that, so that's like... new events. 
that's roughly before the uh like the like the the the, the um the starting Before. scene of um of Civil Ant-Man War? of Ant-Man Oh, of Ant-Man. Okay. Yeah, so, cuz that, that, that was that was like before. that was like 1980s. So it's like it's like a few years yeah. before that. Yeah. So it's stuff that's been set up in this universe but it's not right. like definitely a few years after before. Agent Carter yeah. because that was set in the 50s. Yeah. yeah. Um so <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if you guys noticed but uh they finally brought a TV character Jarvis. to the movies. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 yeah. got the same actor for Jarvis, so that was a nice little touch. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, was it man. Paul Bettany voicing him, or was no, that? No, he just no, has a very similar voice. Okay, yeah. that's cool. At least I don't think so. <laughs> I, just... I guess that was something. I know this isn't time travel related, but that was something that sort of surprised me. Um, sort of in a good way, I guess, because it can be it can happen in later movies or shows or whatever. But they didn't bring back Vision, and they didn't. Um, Oh, what was the other thing? There was there was some other character or event that wasn't reversed. Loki um, dying, Gamora dying. Well, Loki escaped to the parallel yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I think it was mostly that. Yeah, like Vision is still just dead, dead because he wasn't snapped away. He was just killed. Like he was just murdered. We have so, a version so. <laughs> of Loki that escaped with the test. Yeah. Right. So so. So how did you guys think that time travel worked in this world? Because they gave they gave they gave you the rules. Mm. Well, but I was I, pretty convinced. There were up there until were multiple. Certain, yeah, there were multiple right. interpretations. So what? So, did, what how did you guys think? Sure. It worked? Up until a certain point, I was convinced that they were going with the idea of like a fixed timeline, where like everything they're about to do has actually already, already happened. Done. So like you know during 2012 Avengers there was always a second team of Avengers doing stuff in the background. You just never saw them. They were always there because especially since half the stuff they do happens at right after, uh, you know, the last battle scene of the movie or whatever. Right. Um, but then as soon as, well, I guess there's a mix, mix of scenes in that same New York setting. One is that there's this, the chat with um, Tilda Swinton, <laughs> whatever her character's name is that I can never remember. The ancient one, the ancient one, yeah, mm-hmm. um, right. where she's like, "Hey, I know what's going on because I'm cosmically magical smart, and I know she's got the you got it. Yeah, you got it. You can't have this because you'll make a bunch of uh, like alternate timelines if you do that, and that would be no Which is what bueno. They did. Yeah, well, that would be no bueno if you did that. And he's, and then Hulk's like, "No, no, no, it's okay. We're when we get when we put when we're all done, we're gonna go put those stones back where we got them, and so everything's fine." And, she, and then she's like, well, if Doctor Strange said that's what, what was going to be cool, then it's cool with me. Here you go. And then, but then they fuck up by allowing Loki to get away with the Tesseract, which is like, you know, now there's just something and they never go back and fix that. So they're already, there's something different. And then I you think say, the, <sighs> you say they didn't go back and fix it. But well, we don't know Cap what Captain America could did. have, I guess. Yeah, but I feel like they've they've purposely he's supposed to go back and return the stones to where they took the stones from. That's his like main mission, and he wasn't in the room when Loki escaped with the Tesseract, which and right. which leads me to believe that he goes back to the seventies and puts the Tesseract right back in the box right after Tony takes it, or you know the next mm-hmm. day or whatever, and fixes that part. But he's either oblivious to or forgets to or you know something to fix you know because we i feel like if we if he did fix the loki thing we would have had to see him in that moment like he would have always fixed the loki thing like he would have the, popped in and they stopped gotta loki give from the loki doing show that. They yeah yeah loki show something to be about right so yeah, i feel like that's the only reason that happened was so that he can do his tv show <laughs> setting up the tv show yeah. so i was under the impression <laughs> the entire way through that it's not necessarily a fixed timeline, but they're self-sustaining time loops. Sure. Um, because, because like, obviously, you know, the 2014 versions uh, of Thanos and Gamora and Nebula, yeah. like, didn't get come through of, and right. get killed and then go back yeah. for the events of Guardians of the Galaxy to happen. And, but and the way Infinity I saw... The, yeah, so the way I saw it was that, you know... They 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 come to the future. They get dusted. Cap takes the uh, the the stone back, so that everything plays out as normal. 
And then because of that, they come to the future, get dusted, okay. Cap takes the stone back. You know, for So essentially for, for it's eternity. that essentially they're creating these alternate timelines or, you know, people Thanos coming through the portal to twenty twenty three or whatever it is. There the all these different timelines that we're seeing in the movie exist until Cap goes back and puts the stones back where they got them and then everything plays out Infinity War style like it's supposed to. Nope. Plus, plus yeah, there's so, just random, random people coming through time for no reason. <laughs> so I was, I was, yeah. So I was under the impression that things kind of loop back in on themselves, and and you know it get it, it does get messy when you think about the Loki thing, but like, despite the 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 fact that like you know uh, Hulk says you can't go back in and change your past or else you yeah. wouldn't have become you to go back and change it, yada, yada, yeah, 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 start yeah. different realities. Like the way that the the ancient one explained it, it sounded as though like it was still a fixed timeline and as soon as you return the stones, like those other realities one won't timeline. happen. Yeah, yeah. However, I, I didn't see, that, see it that way at all. <laughs> I um I saw it as like okay the version of the Avengers that we've gotten to at this point 5 years from now no matter what they do they go back in the past they could go back in the past and get stuck there forever but that creates a new branch of the multiverse and so every action they do in the past creates a new alternate multiverse Well see and then how well then at how the end of it you... Nebula kills her past self and she stays alive so there's not a back to the Well sure right because there. Because, because because with the rules that were set up, like Thanos dies, Nebula dies, but then Cap goes and returns the stones so they don't die, you know? Yeah. So, no, so not necessarily, because in their world, she still lives in a world where she killed a past version of herself. And right. she will remember but what I, that but, action. Right, but what I'm saying is, like, it's just a... <laughs> to me, that seemed like a self-sustaining time loop. Where where the thing happens, then it doesn't happen, then it happens, then it doesn't happen, over and over again, you know. But she remembers eternity. when it happens and knows that they fixed it so that maybe it won't happen again. <laughs> I don't know. Boom, boom, but it's, boom. It's we definitely... can't use this music because it's copyright, and no, uh... am I saying it again <laughs> because it's not our music? Woo! I don't. Boom. I don't. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> sure. I understand where you're coming from, Ted. But I, I suppose it's every little action they do creates a new branch in the multiverse. And that th we're just seeing like there's n really no way like all the actions they do in the past are creating events that are different than what we saw in the previous movies. But all the previous movies lead up to these version of versions of the characters that have gone back and changed the past. I and think so that's the like, easy way out. To... <laughs> yeah, but that's like absolutely what happened. I, 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 <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're disagreeing or, or yeah, just not understanding. I don't what know either. But, <laughs> but my, I think so, it's a little so, so both of what you're saying. The thing, the thing that cemented the self-sustaining time loop theory to me, though, was Steve coming back yeah. and you know aging and and being there in the main timeline. So is he going back to? There was no. They didn't take a stone from like the 40s but he seems mm -hmm. old enough that he went back that far to be with he went uh, back to the 70s oh yeah i guess that's true because he, mm -hmm. if he's like late 30s as current Still captain america years. yeah 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 that, uh, okay i for some reason i was yeah. thinking that he would have gone back that far well see no, here makes sense if he went if he went to the 70s last then when he returned the 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 scepter to 2012 the space stone wouldn't have been there for for Loki to escape with anyway. So he well, no, um, it would have been. Yeah. The, so the space stone is does what it normally does, and then like it's it's there through normal whatever happens in the time stream forever, <laughs> and then it gets taken at twenty twelve Avengers, and then immediately and but old, he already took old, it in nineteen seventy. So so so. Oh, Cap I see. No no no. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He returns. He returns it immediately. Right. So, at, like so, Tony Stark but, walks up and takes it. The Tesseract. Sure, but like he doesn't. He doesn't. Back. The way the way that the way that you're saying it happens though is he doesn't return that to nineteen. From his point of view, uh -huh. he doesn't return that to nineteen seventies until last because that's where he stays in with 
with with Peggy. Right. So, okay. so, so, yeah, yeah. so okay, if okay. he's going to 2012, that... the space stone wouldn't be there until after, from his point of view. I, he... Okay, yeah, yeah. I think the easier way to explain it would maybe be that he has enough Pym particles now that now that Hank Pym's back and everything. Like he can, they have as much as they need or whatever. He has enough that he goes into all the different times, returns everything where it's supposed to be, and then he just decides to go back to 19 whatever and live his life as a normal human sure with Peggy. sure so i, mean, yeah, I think that's... he doesn't have to return he doesn't have to like have an armful of, in of infinity yeah. stones but... and as the times approach he oh it's time for me to finally go turn this one back <laughs> but this isn't this isn't the point at hand the point uh-huh. at hand was was yeah if this is all you. i have an this explanation is all alternate realities then why did he age back yep. into the main reality because because he didn't ever age from the 70s until the moment that he went back in time there at the end with all the stones ready to go he had never aged from the past until that decision had been made and then from there he went back in time and affected um though although that does kind of go against the whole like multiverse thing yeah i know unless he's able to like Go well, unless what if he he's... ages his life and then comes back to their reality. Yeah, yeah. like after... he That's... consciously comes back. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. So th- the thing the thing is, while that's not what plays out on screen, that is <laughs> right. what the Russos said happened, and I'm okay. upset about it because oh, yeah. it's not it's not as like it's only impactful logical. or whatever. It's yeah. Not this... as... So so in my head. I've explained I feel like it's all self-sustaining time loops and, and a lot of it is fixed into the timeline up to the point where they take the stone and then anything that happens after they take the stone gets erased whenever Reversed. they return the stone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in my head, what I thought was going to happen is that sure, Loki escaped and it's setting up the Disney Plus show but towards the end of the season, what was going to happen was Captain America was going to show up <laughs> and mm-hmm. reverse the things there to explain Maybe. why the timeline played out to where he was able to age through without there being like a, a, an alternate universe. And it, and it can happen. The whole yeah. death of the author thing and all that. Sure. It could happen. But for right now, the Rousseau's word is official and it upsets well it's probably i'm sure Uh that they had i'm sure they had you know like a big whiteboard kind of thing going on to figure this out in the first place because they know their core audience or any of their audience that watches these movies are going to have all these questions and they're going to try to figure Mm -hmm. it out the same same conversations that we're having right now and so i feel like that was they must have they must have had the decision that that's the only way Oh, with the rules that we've set up, that's the only way Captain America can actually come back is if he made the conscious decision to come back to the the MCU timeline proper or whatever. I, but I think I think that it's it's not it doesn't make as sense as much sense in the story because he's basically he's given up the superhero life. So why would he give up the superhero life for decades and then be like, oh, hang on there, Peggy, I just gotta. I gotta jump over a dimension real quick. Uh, what are you talking about? I gotta. It just trust me. I gotta, gotta give a shield on the to mantle. a black guy. I don't remember. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> well, so 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 that. so apparently apparently that That's all his best happens. Friends. Apparently that all I know, happens I know. from his perspective after Peggy dies. Yeah yeah yeah. Because I guess so she would have still died in twenty sixteen or whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, but was there anything in the on screen or mentioned dates that they travel to that you were like, oh, man, they just ruined the timeline or nope. anything like that? OK, because I know there was the whole Spider-Man homecoming debacle with, you know, they said eight years, yeah. so six years or whatever. But um, they didn't they didn't. I, I was waiting as soon as I was just really surprised, I guess, that they just because of all the timeline stuff we do with DCAU where they try not to say dates for for like the sake of. um uh what's the in word case I'm they do of? goof anything up well right. well i guess partially but more i'm talking about like the longevity of watching these shows is like you don't have to feel like it's an old show oh batman we, we know batman the animated series is in the 90s but it could just be whenever you know um, right but like 
I was just surprised that they, you know, so when it's when it's the twenty forties and we're watching the Avengers again, we're like, twenty twelve, ugh, that was so long ago <laughs> or whatever, you know. But I guess these movies will still be going by then, so it won't matter. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was thinking about it earlier today, like after seeing the the Ghost Rider announcement. That eventually, the MCU is going to get to a point where a person cannot feasibly watch the whole thing during yeah. their lifespan. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> And yeah, they're gonna be like, where? Yeah, there's. It's gonna be just like the comics. They're gonna have to be like, where's? What's a good place to start instead of re- starting from mm-hmm. the top? Um, and maybe I was kind of thinking about like, it would it would be a shame. I don't see it happening just because it's Disney and you know every they've been they've had a great track record so far with these movies and everything. But I feel at some point there's just going to be like I hope they can build up to a similar, you know, three or four phase climactic finale kind of a thing over another decade or two or whatever oh they are um, they definitely because, will yeah because otherwise it's just going to be like infinity war and end game like oh my god end of an era so cool also spider-man far from home black panther 2 doctor strange 2 and a couple other movies t- tagged on the end there <laughs> no so, they're building up to another story arc for I, sure I, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure they're gonna build up to another story arc but i really like I want them to give things time to breathe. I want yeah. a lot. I want a lot of of, of movies mm-hmm. that aren't going to be like, or, or at least like, yeah. from from where we're sitting now, don't It'll seem build up as though to they're like, going to be consequential to yeah, to, just just a, a bunch of Iron Man twos and Thor twos and that kind of stuff that don't. They're in the same. No. They reference each other, but I don't want them. I don't. I want them to be small again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause like, They'll get there. It won't be big enough until like when they go to Secret Wars, and then they bring sure. in like all the different characters. Like we'll see Tony Stark again. We'll see him as Iron Man from Iron Man One. We'll see him as Iron Man from Endgame. They'll all be together in a giant <laughs> multiversal hodgepodge of CGI at the very end of the of the MCU. What we if, can only okay, hope. So, so so what if what if the reason that they did the the split realities was yeah. so that they can start doing multiverse stuff and like Absolutely. maybe we'll get like Ben Affleck's Daredevil on screen somewhere <laughs> sure, yeah. or Toby Maguire's Spider-Man or Blade or like yeah. I, I feel I Men feel let's not go that far. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just I'm just saying the no, Blade's they, okay. They, Men they, in they, black Men in black. Yeah, I mean that too because that's technically a Marvel property. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I mean S- S- Sony, like Sony, owns the movie rights, but Sony's been playing ball with the 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 Spider Man stuff. So it's just yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're, they they they've opened the door to where they can start pulling in from stuff that's not necessarily MCU. That might be how they bring Deadpool in. It's definitely a monumental cinematic, like historical thing. This movie <laughs> and this franchise. Um, I mean, we've known that for a while, but mm-hmm. I think like this movie. Well, kind of... they said something about Deadpool. Like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think I think all this whole thing is just it's it's something. Even if the even if this was the end, which it's not. It's not going to be, they, they won't let it be, but I, this is something that will be remembered for a very long time um, in cinematic history as, as like, you know, who knew this could ever happen kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I feel, I feel like end game is going to be to us like <clears throat> what, like back to the future or like return of the jedi or you know (coughs) was to the the people of the 80s how like how like you know you like people the people of the 80s well you know like how people who who grew up in that time period like will show that to their their children and then like they'll be like hey i was actually in the theater when that happened you know And, and like this is gonna be this is gonna be a and conversation of, piece for years to come. And instead of three, True. six, or nine movies for Star Wars, you have to show them twenty some twenty or thirty movies. But it's yeah. I think well, I think the, there's like a there's definitely like a generational thing to this. I was reading something about how, you know, for us or people slightly older than us, it was it's basically like a end of high school or start of college through now type of 
universe. Like it's like we've we've been adults the entire time this has been on. Right. In, in exi- right. And, but yeah. There, but there's other people that have <coughs> gone from eight years old to eighteen years old. There's people that were born and are now you know ten or twelve or whatever. So it's like there's there's such a, a difference in the this different demographics that all that these movies like aim at that yeah there will be people that will never be able to watch all of them and then there's people that have have been watching since the start that are just gonna be this is their life now (laughs) right (laughs) oh sure this is how this is how movies have always been to some people or whatever um which is bizarre concept weird yeah yeah (laughs) to live in a world without rise of the silver surfer Or X Men oh, Three, trials, the trials yeah. and tribulations we had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I but, like Spider Man One and Two, man. We, Halle we, Berry's Catwoman. Uh-huh. We, the way this conversation is going feels like we're getting towards a wrap up. Point. Yeah, I think but, so. But I we haven't we even to. touched the third act yet, and and you guys both <laughs> yeah, we said did. we that, talked oh. all about Captain America on the bench. <laughs> yeah, well, that was talked, the third we act. We talked about man. that, but there was so much more. Like, yeah. I know. I just, okay, so Captain America with Mjolnir. Are we gonna have to split Mjolnir this up into a second the, part? A second part. <laughs> no, let's. We'll just. We'll just say like they real did quick. for the Cap- movie. Captain America. Yeah, I got it. Captain America with Mjolnir was the first moment of the movie where I went like, "Okay, fuck yeah, this is awesome! <laughs> like, yeah, I love everything uh, about that was this." Really cool. <laughs> like I was, I wasn't like skeptical or anything. I was just like, "I'm having a good time." But man, Infinity War was a better movie. And then as soon as the hammer shot back and Captain America caught it, and then Thor's like, "I knew it!" Then I, like everyone was just screaming. With that joy. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he throws it and it hits the shield. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like and, and recreates yeah. essentially what happened in the first Avengers movie. That was so fucking sick. Yeah, and the same thing with I Thor think, charging the Iron Man suit and everything. Yeah. I think I think my favorite part of all of that, I don't give a fuck what anyone else says, but that girl power <laughs> shot was so fucking that was really high. Cool. It yeah. was but, it like, was very hard was so to cool. believe they like, would like, all land in the I, same I, place I, at the same time, but it was still really cool. <laughs> I understand. I understand where some people may be coming from, saying it was that's, ham-fisted. That's where you lose your sense of disbelief, James. Yeah, it's that, <laughs> yeah, that, man. How they did they get that same that. shot? <laughs> yeah, like, the rest of the movie is totally believable. I, I, that, yeah, it is. I, I get. I get like how some people will say, "Oh, that was ham-fisted or whatever," but like that was the fucking cinematic yeah. uh, like equivalent of like a comic book splash page right yeah there. for sure yes like like yes, like, like that was that was the airport fight again mm-hmm. yeah you no know? i like, i didn't like, think they could top that that airport scene for a while and i think this was this was definitely like i i i, I it's it's like i want to go back and watch the movie in theaters but i just want them to fast forward to just the last half hour of the movie <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch this movie again. Like, like yeah. I legitimately waking up the next day after seeing it, like the first thought on my mind was the movie and, and, and <laughs> like automatically like hadn't even left bed yet. Like I'm starting to feel tears just like yeah, I, down the side of my face. Jessica and I left the theater <laughs> and then I, we were just talking about the movie, not even about the Iron Man scene or the Captain America being an old man or anything that made me cry. And we were just talking about like, oh, this thing and that thing. And I was just crying. And I went, why am I still crying? And I'm like trying to drive <laughs> while well, there's just tears like everywhere. And I can't do anything about it. I I feel I feel like I might have had a panic attack like when Iron Man died. <laughs> like, like I just for, for, for like a good 20 minutes, like my chest felt like it was this collapsing in on myself. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. Like I was openly sobbing in this theater. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, geez, that whole thing was just beautiful. Like I very much expected either him or Captain America to die. Yeah. And mm. I, because I was going in expecting it, like I didn't feel like it would have an emotional punch for me, uh-huh. but just, of course. Yeah. It was always like going to the, the, <laughs> The first, the first, like, the the first Iron Man movie, the first time I saw it was, like, just a huge fucking moment for me. And so, like, to to watch that character reach his conclusion mm-hmm. was, it, it, like, I, I, I don't, like, I don't know if it was heartbreaking, 
I felt I felt heart like like my heart well, broke for all of the other characters watching it happen, but like sure. for Tony, I felt like this this makes a lot of sense, and mm-hmm. I'm proud of like where he's come from the start because like if you if you'll remember like when him and like Captain America were bickering back and forth in the first Avengers, like Captain America basically said like you're not the type of person who would throw yourself on the grenade for yeah. for everyone else and then here he is and he does it uh, and like it's, it, uh, it's of course very book ending you know him being the first movie him being the sacrifice and saying i am iron man all that kind of stuff yeah mm-hmm. um uh, i think i think of the two of them that i yeah i also expected it to be those two that could possibly die um I was sort of expecting it to be Captain America who died only because he had less of a role in Infinity War. And I was thinking, oh, to make up for that, they'll give him a bigger role in Endgame and, and then he'll be the one who dies. But then he had an an equal, almost equally, like, I thought, you know, they did the Iron Man moment and then I was like, oh... Like, that was so hard for me, but at least it's over. And then they do the Captain America, they just punch you in the face of Captain America <laughs> having a, the perfect ending to his character at the same time. And I'm like, God damn, dude, you can't do this to me uh, twice in 20 minutes. <laughs> I just, like, I'm just, I'm still thinking about the, the Iron Man thing. And yeah. like, and like <laughs> with with what I just said about, like, how Captain America did the whole, like, like you're not the type of person who would throw yourself on a grenade like i'm i'm thinking about that and it's making like what doctor strange said to tony more impactful like where where he said if i tell you what's going to happen you're not yeah. going to do it and i i 100% like mm-hmm. can believe that because i think if strange told him like tony would have tried to look for a better way yeah. and, and god yeah. The, the, yeah i mean i was thinking about how like I think a, a lot of the reason why the last chunk of the movie works better for me. I mean, it's a giant, you know, Batman v Superman level CGI lightning and fire fest, whatever. But it it was executed well, so that doesn't really matter as long as it's executed correct, like correctly, quote unquote. But I think I think the reason why the last chunk works a lot better for me than the opening stuff of the movie is that like, like, um. You know, for for example, I guess Tony Stark discovered like figures out time travel by just trying a couple times, and then he's like, "Oh shit, it worked!" And like mm-hmm. it, for a while, I was like, "Oh man, this is all really convenient." You know, everything's just kind of happening sort of predictably, but that was so that we could get to the heavier stuff, the stuff that you came there to see, all that kind of thing. Like, there needs to be this: the heroes win kind of ending to this and it was done in the most badass possible way <laughs> so do you uh, do you think that there might be like a four hour cut of this out there somewhere <laughs> that like I has more, more scenes yeah, more captain marvel more tony doing mm-hmm. the time travel stuff like I don't think I'm just glad Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel was they not shot, just. They shot her scenes before they shot the Captain Marvel. Yeah, movie. they did. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I feel like I feel like that's part of why she she's not in there as much is because yeah. they they weren't sure if that movie was going to be as same reason why Black Panther wasn't in Infinity War as much as he <laughs> right. Been. Yeah, right, and I. I'm just glad she didn't come in and just punch Thanos really hard, and that's the whole. thing thing <laughs> yeah like well she, she did that at the she, beginning she, of the movie or does yeah, that exactly. plan anyway yeah, yeah. what so. what do you guys think they're going to do with the iron man franchise now because i know tony's dead but they put pepper in a suit they brought back harley from iron man 3 to be at, at his funeral like well, they'll I, have, don't, uh, I don't think they'll have happy happy's gonna be in uh, Spider-Man: Far From Spider-Man Home. Movie. I, I right. can I expect that they'll do similar stuff where they'll just kind of make cameos in other movies, Happy and and Pepper and the daughter and stuff like that as she's growing up and whatever. The daughter I can don't... be part of the Young Avengers. Yeah, yeah. They'll bring, but I just... they'll bring her and Captain Marvel's niece and um, Kate Bishop just... who Hawkeye trains. I know someday they'll bring Robert Downey Jr. back for some kind of 
you know, either a he flashback could be a ghost, or something. A hologram yeah. ghost. <laughs> he could be a force ghost. But, uh, you know, something. I just hope they wait at least a few years to do it because mm-hmm. I can totally see them being like, oh, you know, uh, now his daughter's... Tony. Or, well, yeah, that or like his daughter's going to be the next Iron Man and she'll have uh, Tony Stark voice in her iron man suit or whatever so yeah. she's like just all he's always there but i, I just idea, i too. want them to wait so bad i want them to to give it time because i think that it's it's yeah. it would make it i think they will cheap. yeah i yeah i feel like i feel like with the way that they ended things on i feel like maybe despite the fact that sony gets a cut of spider-man i think sure. they're gonna try to make spider-man the 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 flagship right now uh, maybe at least know, for I two think, more movies i think i think guardians will still be pretty important especially now that thor's on the team yeah mm-hmm. um but like i don't i don't i don't I think see... the future is pretty unpredictable in a good way like i think that i count i can i have faith enough in the creative team to do do something worthwhile yeah. and not just waste the fact that you have know, all the stuff they just climactically besides, ended um, with. besides black panther 2 um besides doctor strange 2 guardians 3 all the ones we just named they're doing the eternals as a new right. film with angelina jolie yeah. um they're kind of a race of gods that are similar to the new gods of dcu but they're like on thanos's level and above and then they're doing <clears throat> Shang Chi, which is the uh, martial artist, yeah, the kung fu right. master or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so I think I wish characters. this is the fran- this is a franchise that I wish the internet didn't exist for because uh, only because there's like I know I guess because there's a trailer that has been released for Spider Man Far From Home. I know about it from that, but if there hadn't been a Spider Man Far From Home trailer, I wouldn't know that that movie existed or Doctor Strange two or Guardians three or any of this stuff. And so Endgame would have been a lot more like, oh my god, is everyone going to stay dead or are they going to come back? I have no idea. Because I right. know all this stuff is going to happen. It was like, duh, they're going to come back. I just don't know how. So Yeah, I, yeah. Wish, I, wish, I wish they would play a lot of these things a lot closer to the chest. Um, yeah. You know, set up the deals in back room, but like, that's it. Don't... Yeah, yeah. Well, they try. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't sure. do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> they they well, do a good job at the movies, just not... <laughs> Not, well, not spoiling that new that. movies are coming. I think we all agree Endgame was a blast, and we look forward to seeing it again. I think it's Absolutely. it's very telling of how well this universe is done, because at... What the hell was that? A uh, roommate tone. Hey, Jason. <laughs> 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 so, um, I, was just gonna, I think it's very telling that we, as DCAU buffs enjoy this universe pretty much just as much and i mean we don't look into it as deeply necessarily but we still like recognize its um cohesive nature in the same kind of way there's it there's stuff that's better than other stuff there's stuff that's you know arguably like n- not as well made or written or you know whatever but that's the <laughs> humans kind of deal with. sure <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, we got yeah. we you know we got our Zeta projects and stuff. We got our whatever. Uh, but we, don't we... talk shit about <laughs> Zeta projects. <laughs> That's the new hashtag. Um, but you know, I, I, I it's you know we can we could keep talking for another three hours. We're not going to I can't. about about, I, about some this people movie. have work in the yeah. morning Shh, or or you. college to <laughs> nah attend to in the next two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, my my final thoughts on Endgame. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't think about this. This is this is my one thought that I'm bringing that's not an original thought. Okay. I watched Quentin Review's review. Uh, I don't know if he still follows us or not. He follows me on Twitter, but I don't know if he follows us sure. on YouTube still. <laughs> he but, probably does not listen to this podcast. We can yeah, that. I, I could imagine. <laughs> but, so, he, he, he mentioned that because of how everyone was brought back five years later... Mm-hmm. like the the whole structure of any law that's based on age is now <laughs> thrown out the fucking window like because because you can't you can't say like oh you know you have to be 21 to drink so in 2023 that means you were born in 2002 right but then right. we've got like we've got people who are you know 16 years old yeah, like yeah. physically 
that well, that's going to be gone for five years in, in the next spider-man movie is if they even address that because there's going to be half half the students at the high school have already graduated and half are still in high school <laughs> so i, f- yeah, I, I feel that's a good point i feel like they will address it to a degree um from what i'm seeing apparently like that the despite Endgame being, like, the end of the Infinity Saga or whatever, Spider-Man is the end of Phase 3. Yeah. So... Just like Ant-Man and the Wasp was the end of... Or, no, not Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man was the end of Phase 2. Yeah, so... So, so I feel like... I feel like Spider-Man will will act as an epilogue to... Sure. Keep epilogue a secret. Yeah. From what what I'm... From what I'm... uh, From what I'm remembering, I, I... I... believe it starts like 20 minutes after the movie ends so it, yeah. like I, I feel i feel like there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna be addressed especially since it's gonna be a you know a comedic tone and everything they're gonna sure. be like whoa isn't this wacky yeah but, uh, well, we'll definitely <laughs> that's be how the movie starts from, from tony's death i'm sure he won't be over oh sure that. yeah yeah oh definitely i mean you, you you don't get over that in 20 minutes i'm Something still not interesting <laughs> yeah i know i it's interesting that in the trailer nick fury's like oh so you're spider-man eh?" kind of a thing like they're meeting for the first time when they're both at tony stark's funeral so like why why would he act like that i don't know <laughs> yeah i well well right. i I feel i feel like maybe that was something specifically cut for the trailer sure yeah, kinda it kind of like, does come how, off that way a little bit, but I, I yeah. doubt that. But we'll see. I guess, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm well, gonna go ahead and to run over. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead up. and say that. Um, you know, we usually try to do half hour news, half hour of discussion, then half hour for comic relief slash new or uh, mail. But since we're at the about the hour and a half mark, I'm gonna say. I will save the everyone's trash segment for next time and we'll just have double the amount of stuff. So we'll pick a shorter main topic next episode, if that sounds good to you guys. <laughs> and we'll go Shit, ahead. And unless just, you've got and, like a quick question or two. I mean, I could, I could like, do a couple of them anyway. There's, there's definitely ones that are, are longer answers. So I can, I can save those for next time. And I apologize to anybody that, that might be, uh, Oh, my, my question didn't get read. Um, you should, I, I put a question in the, in the, in the discord. You did, yeah. Let me. Yeah, get to you that you one. didn't understand. You didn't understand uh, last time that I did that, and you thought it was a response to someone else's question. But no, <laughs> I wanted to specifically know about Ted dabbing, dabbing on, on the, the haters. haters. Yeah. 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 It had nothing to do with the other person's question. <laughs> I don't it know. was I, my own I question. I had screenshot it in the same screenshot because it was right afterwards. So I had, for some reason, assumed that it had related to that. Did you want me to read the question that you posed in there this morning? Uh, yes. <laughs> Which is anon- anonymous. <laughs> this is it, it's a, this is a says. screenshot from my Tumblr inbox. Yes, yes. This is the DCAU timeline Tumblr inbox, which I'm also like connected to, so I'll see these come in also. But it says, uh, "Does Bruce Tim can sorry? Does Bruce Tim considers the Batman Beyond comics as canon?" Uh, Discuss. No. <laughs> I, I, like, like, like I didn't want to answer that in. <laughs> It, on on the Tumblr, I thought it was just funny and was gonna send it to you guys specifically. Yeah. But then I was like, "Fuck it, I'll put it in." Yeah, Instagram. we don't we don't have to actually address that. The answer is probably not, and I don't understand why anybody would. Yeah. Hillary J. Bader wrote a lot of the comics from like the it's first this, and second volumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but this too. isn't this isn't what they're asking about. If 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 no. I if I if I if I have probably this correct, probably the Earth ones. the Earth Twelve ones. Yeah, or the, if I, yeah, or the rebirth one. Well, if I have this correct, this is probably the same anonymous user that like just asked me what happened to Wonder Woman after Justice League Unlimited. What happened? Oh, she she yeah, fought. Tell us. She fought Mano Therok and the Persuader. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. In Justice League vs. Fatal Five. There's your timeline video. Same, That's it. Do you also it assume this is Justice the same League anonymous? Unlimited. Do you also assume this That's... is the same anonymous that comes on and asks? Uh, when, when does, does this show happen? When Probably. does this movie happen? Yeah. Probably. I don't um, know. They, they might listen to this podcast. If you do, yeah. I'm not making fun of you. Um, yeah. Of but we, there's are, a, we like Anonymous. We you do not want to get on Anonymous. Hip Hop Anonymous. There's a lot of things you can Google. Guy Fox. There's yeah. a lot of things you can uh, wait till we put out content for. Uh-huh. 
So this but, is from Multi, Multi Moon Kong Jr. on the Discord. He says, "Hey guys, I have a question for the podcast. What's your favorite Marvel movie? It does not have to be just MCU." Um, Ooh. I I'm, I'm I go back to Spider Man, Spider Man Two a lot. I find myself of of Marvel movies. Um, it's it's one that uh, it's ones that feel nostalgic enough at this point that are like, oh, these came out while I was in you know middle school or whatever. But they also are still good movies as an adult and they are kind of the pioneer along with the original x-men's of the mm. the this era of superhero films so yeah um, i like x-men 2 a lot with nightcrawler and mm -hmm. everything that that was a really good one i loved Logan. i loved the x-men movies i loved all of them except origins sure i don't give a fuck yeah. what anyone says three was fun <laughs> But, yeah, no, it's not bad. It's just not as good, I guess. I but like, <laughs> I, I haven't Phoenix. revisited them in a while, and yeah. I don't think, like, uh, 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 as um, like Howard the Duck movies. I don't. I don't think as <laughs> movies that are personally important to me that they would fall in that category. I think that has to go to like Iron Man and Avengers. Um, yeah. MCU and then, movies, I think the original Avengers is probably my favorite mm -hmm. still. Yeah. I think I think I think I think Endgame has to be in there now too too. Sure. That, Moments of Endgame. <laughs> but uh, as as far as as far as movies that are important to me and the development yeah. of me as a person, sure. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Iron Man and Avengers for favorites, yeah. follow following those yeah. those guidelines. There have been movies okay. that I, I've probably enjoyed more since then, but those are the ones that stick with me. Mm -hmm. Well, That's I'm going to do Spider-Man two, um, yeah. X-Men. Yeah. The original Iron Man, as far as Marvel movies goes, I'm going to do one more question. Then we can wrap this up. Um, this is from byproduct on the discord. He says, what's your least favorite thing in the DCAU? It's the least favorite mm -hmm. thing, not necessarily episode or character or anything, just anything. Just, thing. um, the least thing least is not thing. my least favorite swamp thing. Um, my least favorite man, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I it's hard to say because there's even the stuff that I dislike about the DCAU is still like heartwarmingly good to me. <laughs> like I'm not the biggest fan of the talk to the camera about gun safety type static shock episodes, but they're still like I'll go back and watch them on purpose kind of episodes. So I don't know. I, I, I feel like for me, about the, my least favorite thing about the DC, I feel like that's got to be Justice League at, just as a whole. Like maybe at least I, season one. <laughs> well, I, so so I feel I feel like it's got good episodes. Um, Secret Origins, great. Yeah. Savage Time, great. Um, Metamorphosis, Starcross, not so great. Well, War well, World, so, so, <laughs> so Wild Cards, great. Comfort and Joy, great. Besides those, a better world. I don't. Yeah, but besides those, like I, I, I don't remember a lot of what happens in Justice League, and like that's that's a series that like anytime I revisit it, it feels new to me. Which I don't feel like it should, be, be, because of <laughs> well, you know what we do. Like I feel yeah. like I should know all of this stuff. I think my one of my least favorite things about the DCAU as a whole is also one of my favorite things about the DCAU, because it's it's both frustrating and sets it apart from anything else. It's unique. Is all of the different all the different takes on like classic characters, like like your Power Girls and your Hal Jordans and all that stuff that that like it's they they stay different. yeah but they stay so true to the core like feeling of dc comics and the in the core mm -hmm. a lot of the characters are like ted and i have discussed them being like like the dcau is like the most um what's the right word for it? like like you wrung out the sponge and you're left with like the 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 very mildew water <laughs> yeah exactly the dcau is mildew water uh no the, the like the the essence of dc is the dcau but then they go and do stuff like wally west but maybe not barry allen kyle rayner gets up and serves powering all this kind of stuff where it's annoying to have to figure out what like you know 
to to have look for answers to stuff that we don't have answers for because anything's pos anything goes or whatever <laughs> but at the same mm -hmm. time so it's not just a direct adaptation that at the same time that makes it one of the best things so <laughs> i don't yeah. know my yeah. least favorite thing about the dcau is that uh there's not more of it as often as there should be <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> my least favorite thing about the dcau is eclipso he was never called eclipso he was just a dude <laughs> my, my least favorite thing about the um the dcu is the imperium all the little <laughs> white guys running around yeah those imperiums yeah i get yeah, you those imperiums are fun my my least favorite thing about the dcau and you guys can edit this out if you uh if you feel the need to but why the fuck did they make? Why the fuck did they make? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> All right, we'll have to edit that one out. Yeah, yeah. edit that one. Out. <laughs> or just, I'll just, uh, I'll just, or, do, we'll just I'll bleep just it. When you said, "Why didn't they make?" We'll just bleep parts. I was of gonna words. say, I'll lead up to you saying my least favorite thing about the DCAU, and you can edit it this out if you want to. Is <laughs> <laughs> you should probably just set it that out. <laughs> so, yeah, we probably. Should. <laughs> anyway, I really want uh, to know what Maddie said. I've got a really quick comic relief recommendation. Okay, tell yeah. us. Cool. I read tell us DC's now. Year of the Villain. <coughs> Ooh. It was the special twenty-five cent thing that's coming out. It came out uh, May first. Okay. And you could buy it if you go to Free Comic Book Day. That will. As of the airing of this podcast, that'll have already happened, but <laughs> your store will probably still have those issues. Um, and what day? And what day is free special? Comic was it May fourth? Saturday, May fourth. Oh. oh, sweet! Yeah. I need to. I need to head to my shop after. Pretty soon. Uh, after get out of class then. But they have this special twenty-five cent book called "You're the Villain" that you can buy. Um, it's got three. I love that little cover. Short stories in it. Yeah, it's a cool cover. It's got Perpetua on the cover yeah. and Lex Luthor. And it looks very like laughs. old. It looks like a late 90s cover or something. Yeah, but it's Greg Capullo who did uh, Court yeah. of Owls. He did the cover. <clears throat> so it's got three little short stories. Uh, the first one is called Doom. It um, sort of takes place, well, it definitely takes place like with the same events of Scott Snyder's Justice League book, but shortly after the current arc that's been in the sixth dimension. So... Um, that still has one more issue, issue number 24, to complete the Sixth Dimension arc. So this, these events actually take place after that issue. But the second chapter is Leviathan, written by Brian Michael Bendis. That ties into his action comics work, mm -hmm. and it um, features Batgirl and Green Arrow on the hunt for Leviathan. And, oh, and right, yeah, yeah. And people are warning people about that. Um, Robin has a theory that Red Hood is wrapped up in Leviathan, which makes me think that I, I wasn't sure until now, but this is the same Leviathan group that Grant Morrison created for the Batman Incorporated series, which did kind of involve some Red Hood and Talia involvement. So the Leviathans like in Supernatural have a big mouth for a face. Nice. So that's all I gotta <laughs> say about that. <laughs> There's one more story um, called Justice uh, that was part three, and this is also like a couple of days after the events of Justice League number 24. It's the entire Justice League sitting around uh, their table um, talking about, like, Luthor's plans with Perpetua. Um, it seems to su suggest that Luthor... I'm trying to say this in, like, a spoiler-free sort of way, but he um, makes a sacrifice to gain a certain amount of power so that he's able to sort of redistribute... Perpetua's gifts to a he bunch of villains. He pushes Gamora off a cliff so he can get the Soul Stone. Is that what you're saying? In a way, um, a similar <laughs> sort of sacrifice for sure. But he he um, he does like a Underworld Unleashed move where that was a story arc in the '90s where Neuron, the Devil, goes around yeah. to the DCU and gives a bunch of villains a deal where they can become mm -hmm. a lot more powerful if they sell their soul to him so this is a similar yes. thing where lex is going to go around offer a bunch of power to villains in exchange to be part of his army of doom that'll fight for perpetua's goals in some capacity um but that's what this book was all about kind of leading up to this whole uh, summer event where luthor's giving a bunch of people powers and changing stuff around and there was one page that teased the upcoming batman arc uh where bane takes over gotham <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And Bane has allied himself with the Psycho Pirate, 
and Thomas Wayne Batman from the Flashpoint universe. Whoa. He did not die from the button. He's been kind of popping in and out of the current Batman book a little bit, but Flashpoint Batman is very much still around. I've almost made a decision at this point to... I'm going to finish Doomsday Clock, and I'm going to finish... Um, like, I'm going to keep reading Justice League, I think. Like, I'm very behind still, but it's still, like, the book that interests yeah. me the most right now. This is the best but books I, right now. But I think, other than those, I'm going going to, like, you know, 2016, when Rebirth started, I gave it my best to, to kind of try to keep up with this, the, the titles that I wanted to mm-hmm. keep up with. But it's gotten to a point where i i just want to start doing what i had been doing but more up to date at least um where i'm just gonna grab like okay you know uh detective comics got some really cool stuff going on right now the trades out for the last the most recent volume i'm gonna go grab that kind of a thing and just yeah. kind of keep up with stuff that i read the good stuff give a shit about yeah yeah mm-hmm. so for sure yeah, i'm still trying out stuff there's a new series called deceased have you heard of right. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the Tom Taylor who wrote all the Injustice uh, comic tie-ins. Is doing oh, like okay. A I didn't story. know I got the yeah. first issue. It came out today, but it, or on May 1st, but I have not read it yet. I keep saying, is that is Tom King involved with that? Tom Taylor. Tom oh, okay. King is writing the main Batman book. There's someone that I follow on Twitter that Crisis. is either an artist or a writer for that, and it's I keep seeing it might be one of the Walking it. Dead artists, which would make sense being mm. a zombie book. <laughs> well so, anyway, i think that's, that's probably got. it for today <laughs> yes by the book uh, you're the villain yeah. that special's only 25 cents okay so i bought two copies well thanks for listening everybody <laughs> this is the end of the podcast and this is where you stop listening because you know what i'm about to say i'm going to say how the podcast is out every other monday on iTunes and YouTube, watch our database.com. You should share it with your friends. Thank you to Adam Mullen for writing the music. He's at musica-atomica.com. We're on social media at DCAU Watchtower, or you can reach us at info at watchtowerdatabase.com. The videos are out every Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, etc. Uh, we got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a Discord server linked in the description of this video. Uh, we can go, go to patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower. Chuck us your coffee money, and we can give you some stuff in return. There's a Loot Crate affiliate code in the description where you can go click it and buy a loot crate and we get some money and there's also a merch on teespring.com slash store slash dcau watchtower so have a good day merch. everybody wow. you did great merch. you can even cl- you can click yeah. on the time codes at the merch. bottom of the screen and jump merch. around like the avengers buy did that. during endgame merch. yes buy that. that would be great merch. I hope everyone heard much. anything that Ted said because Maddie's just being an asshole. You, you can take Maddie's <laughs> you, audio you and just drop it down really levels, low during that part. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you I don't can want to have really low. to. <laughs> yeah. Just um, all right. So, so the we podcast is We should snap our over. fingers and snap them out of existence. What? No offense, but I really don't think you could follow the reasoning of a 12th level intellect such as my own. Guess not. The 12th Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit watchtowerdatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of.